笑了。Welcome to the Doctor's Companion Presents Doctor Who The Long Way Round, the weekly podcast where we review, discuss, and recap every episode of Doctor Who, one doctor at a time. I'm Nick Jimenez. I'm Scott Corelli, and I really like the way that you pronounced recap. Yes. <laughs> and recap. I'm Cassandra Fredrickson. <laughs> and uh, today on the show, we'll be discussing Spearhead from Space, which is uh, the third doctor, John Pertwee's first ever story and also the first episode on this little adventure that is full fully in color yeah uh first first lots of firsts tons of firsts in this uh yeah. first episode fully in color first episode of john pertwee first episode shot entirely first and only episode ever to be shot on film oh um, yep entirely shot on film you, it, usually it's just the outdoor scenes are shot on film and then the indoor scenes are on a set shot on video. But there was a strike going on when they were filming this. Uh, the the crew that ran their video equipment was on strike. So they had to shoot the whole episode with the film equipment and the film crew until the strike was over. And this was the only episode that they filmed entirely with the film crew. Nice. So that's why this is the only classic Who story on Blu-ray because it's the only one that they could upgrade to HD. Well, it looks great. It yeah. does look great. It, it looks it like a, a looks like a James Bond movie. Really, I was gonna say it looks a lot like a like a Hammer, like a seventies horror movie, like uh, like the Wicker totally. Man. Totally. Um, it's also the first uh, Auton story. Um, so this really, is their introduction as well. Yep. So uh, lots of firsts, lots of firsts. Lot, first, first story with with uh, Liz, uh, the third Doctor's first companion, written by Robert Holmes. Robert Holmes, the the, the greatest uh, Doctor Who writer ever. Yep. Um, this is his third story, right? And his first like classic one, right? Yeah, because he does a couple for Troughton, and they're not so great. Yeah, they're just they have like, I don't. They, I I feel like they both have. Um, I mean, the Space Pirates is really bad, but... Oh, God. <laughs> but I think that they both have... Can we just have... not have pirates ever be on the show again? <laughs> God. You're not kidding. Um, but, but, but I think that they both have, you know, ho- Holmes-isms mm-hmm. um, that I like a lot. I think, the thing about Robert Holmes is, in every story that he ever writes, he has, like, this one character that has nothing to do with anything that he just, like, writes the crap out of. And just sure. turns them into a real character and gives them all these things to do. And they really don't have anything to do with anything. He just wanted to write a weird, like, English character. And yeah. We call, that, uh, we call that Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't think we do. I don't, I don't know what that is. <laughs> um, but, uh, but, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a thing. It's like, I don't know, there's... Certain aspects of the Troughton stories that I that I like that he wrote, but yeah, this I think this is the first one where you're like, "Whoa, Robert Holmes, oh, coming out swinging!" Holy crap! Wait, so who, who's the useless character in this? Is it is it uh, is it Snivels McGee? Is it like the kind of Steve <laughs> Buscemi looking guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay, uh, it's cool. uh, Sam. Uh, what's his name? Sam. Uh, oh, the Mark rabbit Seeley? guy. Sam Seeley. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, the poacher. The poacher. Yeah. Oh no no no! I'm, uh, no, he's great. Yeah, that's um, who I'm talking about. That's oh, that's the guy. That's the guy that Robert Holmes just like. Oh, him and his the wife crap out of. Yeah, him and his wife. See, like, there's just like, see, yeah. Well, we'll, we'll get there. Let's the let's neighborhood start. watch association. <laughs> yeah, let's get in there. Okay, so okay. let's so so let's start with Spearhead from Space Part One, um, which begins with 
so the so so unit is watching the skies and uh, these uh, asteroids or meteorites or something are falling to the ground. They're like, oh, that's weird. We think it's random, but they're also sort of in formation. Super weird. And then we meet Sam Seeley, who's like a poacher, and he finds one of the meteorites, and it's like glowing and stuff. And he's like, "Oh, that's weird. I think I'm gonna steal this." And then, and then cut to over in in the woods, the TARDIS lands, and uh, the Doctor comes out and immediately collapses into the grass. Um, and then we meet uh, Liz, uh, Liz Shaw, who uh, is going in for a job interview at unit and meets with Brigadier Lethred Stewart. And, uh, they, they talk about what unit is. And she, she, she's like, what? Like little blue men. I was like, no one says blue men. No one. <laughs> Green men. You yeah, jock. She, had, she, she just, has... she's just bullying nerds at that point. Like you <laughs> yes. little blue men. Like she's just trolling them. Yeah, like, how did she get recommended? No one told her what this job was when she like signed up for it. Because she oh, immediately has nothing but contempt for unit. Yeah, she hates them. Um, and then uh, so so then uh, Brigadier starts talking up this guy that he knew as the doctor uh, that he met once and helped out once, and just at that. Very, at that very perfect moment, he gets a phone call from a soldier who's like, "Hey, I uh, found this guy out in the woods uh, with a police box," and he's like, "Police box, you say? Bring him in and and bring him to the to the, you know, the and have, the and have an armed guard or... guard the 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 police. Box. Yeah, the the police box is like, <laughs> why? Okay, whatever. All right, run over brigadier. You're the boss. Um, and uh, so then the brigadier and Liz Shaw they go to. This uh, the infirmary and 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 find uh, the doctor. Only the doctor doesn't look the way that the brigadier remembers, and he's like, "Oh, that's that's not that's not the doctor. This is some other weird guy." That's John Pertwee. Yeah, that's <laughs> weird. Um, and and so they're talking about uh oh, and then they there was like X rays, <laughs> the X ray rays, and there's like the two hearts. It's like, what kind of joke is this? And he gets a call from the blood guy, and the blood guy's like, "What." What kind of joke is this? And he's like, I'm not joking. You're the one joking. <laughs> wasn't it? Was it his heartbeat Everybody's like twenty beats per minute? Other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John Pertwee just just causing problems for everybody. Not um, even awake yet. Yeah, not even awake yet, and just like causing all kinds of drama. And then the vacuum guy overhears uh, overhears this, and then he just like casually strolls directly into a into a phone booth and calls some sort of hotline to get a reporter there so that he can get paid for the story of this possible guy from another planet that they're holding there. Um, because that's totally normal and a hotline would totally send a reporter to go investigate that. Absolutely. No question. Um, <laughs> sure. <laughs> and, and then you, you get meet the reporters later in the episode and there's like 50 of them. It's like fill the room. And you're just like, what, what, <laughs> what, what, you called a hotline for one newspaper. Why did all of these newspapers show up? Did well, that newspaper all, did, call? Did they call the other newspapers and be like, "Oh God, you got it. We got this great story. You should come scoop us." <laughs> like, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Well, BBC anyway, One's coming. You know who all should come? BBC Two. Yeah, totally. Um, I guess that's true. Maybe news just works differently in in Britain. Uh, they all I have to get the story. Yeah, well, yeah, because they're, like, governmentally funded. I don't know. Who knows? It's very socialist. It works. So anyway, uh, so Pertwee, uh, who already has his pinky ring and his bracelet on, um, for some reason. It's the uh, Rick Ross of doctors. <laughs> oh, you have no idea. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> so <laughs> he's, he, uh, he wakes up. Is this – is it in this episode? Yeah, yeah, it is in this episode. So – He's Pertwee keeps asking for his shoes. The doctor keeps asking for his shoes, and then the 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 doctor, the the actual doctor, the medical doctor, gives the doctor. His, that's really confusing. <laughs> gives, <laughs> Lowercase gives, d. Gives Pertwee his shoes, and he just snatches them and like turns and holds them, like, like just hugs cuddles them. them. It's <laughs> inc- it's one of my favorite John Pertwee moments. I think of all just snatches them and then rolls over and cuddles with his shoes. Um, 
It's so swift, such a swift movement. And then the first judo chop of the Pertwee era sh- comes up, and uh, <laughs> and it's not Pertwee doing it, which is impressive. Uh, the first judo chop of the Pertwee era is actually an Auton who tries to <laughs> tries to kidnap the doctor in a wheelchair, and then as they're wheeling him into a van, he takes over the wheelchair and then makes an escape, a wheelchair escape, running away from the Autons in a van. And then he he bails on the wheelchair and then runs through the forest. And then the dudes that are, uh, the guards that are guarding the TARDIS spot him and then just instantly shoot him. And he makes per, he makes Pertwee, Pertwee cliffhanger face and then passes out. Yeah. No, this, <laughs> it was one of the most glorious like Benny Hill things I've ever seen in Doctor Who, and <laughs> and it just that's, ends with that's that's the that's a you could draw the Benny Hill comparison to a lot of the John Pertwee era. I'll be totally honest. Yeah, I'm excited. I mean, well, it, he he looks. I mean, every, right away off the bat, it's like, hey, the era of like grumpy black and white cat men is over. Like, <laughs> This is in color. He's silly. He's going to dress like Liberace. <laughs> well, there's not gonna, yet. Not there's yet. Gonna, not there's going to be judo chops and hijinks <laughs> and shit. Like, I, I, episode one is, like, almost purely shenanigans. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How uh, How do you like... Uh, and then he's gunned down like... in cold blood. <laughs> yeah. It's, that's how they do the first cliffhanger of a new doctor. <laughs> ah! <laughs> he's... <laughs> Will the doctor die of bleeding out on the ground? <laughs> it's, it's incredible. Oh, God. He's not I the just first want... doctor we would lose to gun violence, as history would prove. Oh, it's true. It's true. <laughs> um, it's so true. It's so true. Oh, no. <laughs> Two out of every 12 doctors although you could, died of gun Although violence. you could... <laughs> Although you could argue that the gun violence of that of that doctor is actually gang violence. That's um, true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited to watch that with you, Nick. Oh In the God. <laughs> Oh man. Um Yeah, so so all right, so I'm curious, Nick, this is your first uh you know, I've I've long said that I think you'll love uh the Pertwee era and John Pertwee as the doctor. So so right off the bat, I mean, you get a little bit of them here. What, yeah, what do you think say, so far? I, this isn't really um, – part one is is very actually like Pertwee light. I mean, we have that great scene with where he like, you know, hugs his shoes. But he, <laughs> he's either unconscious or being like chased in a wheelchair <laughs> in, yeah. this, in this one. That's there really true. isn't a lot of like him – you know, monologuing or like, you know, we do get some great, uh, you know, it's so funny. We mentioned last week about how Troughton didn't go through the motions of uh, that we would know a regenerated doctor would do. And in this one, we do. He he plays with his face. Uh, he seems very out of sorts about his face, but then he's kind of into it by the end. Mm-hmm. Um. So, yeah, no, I mean, like, I mean, I know having watched all of them, like, I really love Pertwee and I love his energy and I love his like sense of humor and I, 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 I'm really into it, but like in this first part, he's kind of just in a coma for most of it. <laughs> That's true. It's a real, it's a real Christmas invasion of a situation. I will say, and, and this is going to sound really backwards and weird, but uh, you know, I, 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 I've yet to see a lot of John Pertwee as an actor mm-hmm. and watching this first episode, I, I couldn't get over how much of a resemblance both in acting and appearance uh, he, he bears to his son, Sean Pertwee. Oh yeah, it's it's absurd. Mm-hmm. Anytime I watch Gotham, I'm just like, "What's John Pertwee doing on this show?" Because Gotham's... they're both around the same age now, or like you know, he's at the age that John was. I right. think. Yeah. No, you're totally right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, know, it's Master crazy. Bruce. Remember yeah. when? Uh, remember when Bruce was like, "Yeah, someone stole my dad's watch." I was like, All right. <laughs> what time, man? You know what? We're gonna put the watch right in up. Was like that. He won't <laughs> beat him to death. I'm gonna. <laughs> it's your father's watch, that. It's all that's left of it. Oh my father. god! I'm fairly certain if I like gun to my head, top sure. ten list of classic Who stories, I think Spearhead from Space would definitely be in that top ten list. 
Oh yeah. I mean, definitely. I've, I've seen it. I've probably seen it. This is probably the sixth time I've seen it at this point. Um, it's one of my go-to Doctor Who stories. I think it's just so ridiculously entertaining, top to bottom. Yeah. No, it's um, it's great. Um, I mean, the Autons. I mean, we can talk about it because we do see the Autons in this episode, but the Autons are creepy AF. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. And also. What what do you think of uh, Brigadier? Because it's the first time that you're meeting the Brigadier. This is my You've first heard him time. Talked about yeah. What? I know. I was going to say yeah. yeah. This is my first time seeing Brigadier Leftbridge Stewart. Because you've you've heard him talked about yeah. Um, and like I, on, I, on I, I well, and I had the pleasure of meeting him as a Cyberman. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, but yeah, what do you what do you think of him now? I like him. He's he's really badass. I bet he pulls. I mean, he's I, I, he, he has he brings a real sort of kind of you know watching this you could re, you could really tell that this was like when Roger Moore was James Bond you know what I mean like there was just a real heightened like you you almost expect there to be like Austin Powers like scene cutaways where like Brigadier and, yeah. and like the Doctor are just like dancing <laughs> um, for sure but, but yeah okay okay I don't know when this because they yeah they, they all kind of I watched these all in a row. And Mm -hmm. um, they all kind of bleed together, but, and okay, tell me if this is a thing or not, but I, I was, I was shipping the hell out of uh, Liz and Stuart. I I was all about that and their, their whole, like, I don't know, man, just like their relationship where they're like the three of them are in a lab and they're like bickering and the doctor's like, stop, (laughs) just, just make out, make (laughs) Kate, make Kate. Interesting. <laughs> That's really interesting. Um, huh. I never really. I. 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 I find that. I in classic Who for the most part there there are a few exceptions every once in a while but for the most part yeah. I find the characters in classic Who to be like weirdly asexual sure. in general. What was what, what was um, the what was the boy's name from last time like Nobby? What was that guy's name? <laughs> the- <laughs> Ben? Oh, no, don't Ben. <laughs> ben. Yeah. Ben. I'm going to call him Nobby. What are you um, <laughs> how, how, how old was Ben? Like in the, in uh, the in canon. How old is he? he he's like 18, like, right? 18, he looked like 19. an adult, like 30 year old man, but he was acting like a little boy. And like, <laughs> I think he's supposed to be in his 20s. I'm not sure. Yeah, but no, I I really like Shaw a lot. Um, I like that her name is Elizabeth Shaw, like uh, Rooney, mm-hmm. like um, Numi Rapace and Prometheus. Right. Um, I, I I well, I she's named after that. That character is named after Liz Shaw because, um, and actually, Alien, the story Alien, is based off of uh, an episode that we're going to see like a few months from now. Whoa! Um, so I owe every episode of Doctor Who <laughs> an apology. Yeah, like, I yeah. always say I always say that they rip off Alien. No, no, no. Ridley Ridley Scott was a huge Doctor Who fan. Man, Ridley Scott would direct the hell out of a Doctor Who episode. He would. <laughs> That's very true. Matt Damon, <laughs> um, Doctor. So anyway, uh, yeah, no, uh, Brigadier's good, and 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 Liz Shaw is um, uh, she's a complicated thing i like her um, now i mean like even when she was talking smack about the unit like i really like the cut of her jib uh yeah no she's super she's super like intelligent which was like her whole point uh sure. as a character like you know, of, like oh we've had a bunch of like damsels in distress and stuff let's do let's do like a really smart character like uh like barbara was yeah um and, and so I they wanted like... to do a super smart character. But the problem, as you'll find as we go through this season, which, to be honest, like this season, like we're, like this season and the, the, the first couple of seasons of Tom Baker are like the three like best seasons of Classic Who. Oh, okay. Um, and we're going to kind of burn through them pretty early on. <laughs> okay, well, yeah. <laughs> I, I like that. I like that they're all over the age of 30, though. I like that Pertwee and Brigadier yeah. and, and Shaw are all like adults. Like, I thought that was well, a cool, what, like, dynamic. what happens as we get through this uh, season seven, um, the first season of John Pertwee, uh, it's the only season with Liz Shaw. 
And oh. what you find is that Liz Shaw is so smart that she never gets herself into trouble, so she never has anything to do. <laughs> yeah. That's that's the she's too smart to be a companion. Yeah. Like, it's like what just, would happen if Cinema Sins tried writing a screenplay? Yeah, yeah. No, that's exactly she's like the Cinema Sins of characters. Like, <laughs> She doesn't make any mistakes, and so as a result, she doesn't have anything to do. Sure. Um, yeah. So she's a, she's a really cool idea in theory, but it just doesn't – just a combination of things just doesn't really work out for her, unfortunately. Sure. You know what she kind of reminds me of is uh, is Kate Stewart. Yeah, a little bit. Oh, huh. maybe that's her mom. I mean, that's what I'm – that's my new headcanon. <laughs> what? Well, Kate, Kate Stewart is is the daughter of. The oh, right, shop. right. <laughs> Weird. Yeah, I okay. buy it. I buy it. For it, they they found each other later in life. Come on, Liz. <laughs> Get to it. <laughs> <laughs> For queen that's, and country. I mean, that's, that's definitely <laughs> what the brigadier would be like. Uh, all right. So do you think let's like talk a, about. Do you think it's like a framed photo of Winston Churchill on the Brigadier's desk? <laughs> oh, for sure. Like, no question. Like, it's like to his Anytime left. Anytime he says queen and country, he has two framed pictures one of the queen and one of Winston Churchill. The he direction. says for those, queen and country. And those, his, his eye line shifts as he says the two words. Those are actually uh, on his knuckles, <laughs> written in, tattooed in ink as queen and country. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> right here we go, <laughs> and just old timey boxes like autons. Yeah. yeah. Oh god! But the autons are like genuinely like creepy. Like I like that there, they. There's a moment. There's a moment later in that I want to talk about the autons. Okay. They get. They get creepier. Um, oh so, yeah. So Cass, tell us about tell us about part two. All right. So uh, the doctor gets shot, but he's not dead. He's just mostly <laughs> dead. So we need some miracle max. He's he's there. the most in a coma that the doctor has yeah. ever seen. What the yeah, hell I does that mean? I didn't understand. And when you say doctor, you mean medical doctor. We, we all yeah. know. Just to be clear, I don't. I don't think the people we all know, but I don't think the people at home. Sure, know. the medical doctor, the surgeon. Yeah, the medical doctor, the practitioner. Oh man, I didn't understand. Did he get actually shot, or was it like a trank dart? Um, no, that was I, a, that, that was a gun yeah. with a bullet in it. The bullet grazes his the top of his head because they talk about oh. how there's like a like a burn on his head, but oh. the unit oh, has see, some terrible that. aim apparently. Um, yeah. So he's he's just mostly dead. Um, that explains why you never just see one unit soldier shooting; you see like a dozen. <laughs> of them. Yeah, it's like, like the only way they can get anything done. It's like the stormtroopers. Like that's, that's, that's episode. All it is. It's literally episode four of every. That's the last episode of every John Pertwee story is just unit just blowing away. Some oh, clips. yeah. Just like unloading their clips. Just... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very like non-rich. 50 dudes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll get to, no- we'll oh, get to part four later. Go Everybody's ahead, going to jail. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so unit is able to recover um, some of the – a part of a, a meteorite that falls to Earth and it's like plastic, which is weird. Um, and then we cut away to this creepy doll factory um, in, like, one of the best cutaways ever because it's just like, oh, there's something about his face. And then there's just like, ugh, cut away to a creepy uh, doll mold. Um, oh, my God. And the people working in the factory are just rocking out. Oh, my to, God. Like, yeah. Generic, to generic <laughs> late 60s rock and roll. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> you just, like, cut cut to the doll factory and just like, ba 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 da They're just, like, smoking, like, like rag weed, like, from the... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, my nephew in Glasgow is... got this for us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but this is the most populated we're going to see the doll factory at any point sure. in time in this whole episode. Um, everyone's a three little bit... employees. Yeah, um, three employees every... <laughs> is the most populated we'll ever see. It. <laughs> it's the BBC. <laughs> They're on a budget, you guys. 
Um, so this doll factory is really creepy. There's a creepy guy from the hospital that tried to steal um, the doctor, who we later find mm-hmm. out is an Auton. So this creepy Auton guy is here. <laughs> Sure. Um, oh my god! Remember when he was just standing in the phone booth? Yeah. <laughs> just st- what was he doing? He was I just standing know. there. I think he's like telepathically communicating or something, or just being a straight up creeper. Because what a like, weirdo! <laughs> yeah. Like one of the reporters just like walks up, just like, "Hey, uh, mate, you're gonna be done in there. You- oh, you're not on the phone." And then he just runs away. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> like, all right. That's awkward. He's keen to get home. <laughs> <laughs> what's that guy's man. name it's uh oh, Channing. Channing. Channing, Channing yeah yeah because there's a part i don't know if it happens yet but there's a scene where um is it ransom it's that one no no it's a guy that's like being under it's one guy that's being mind controlled right and yeah and Bert, we uh, hibbert hibbert hey, hibbert like don't trust channing channing's evil channing's a threat to the human race <laughs> yeah <laughs> channing um, it was just funny because I was like, it's just him chanting. Oh my god, John the doll maker? Oh, oh he's god, weird. John. John the doll maker is the most British person to ever British. <laughs> like, he's just. Oh my god, he's so British. I'm 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 John still all maker. about um about uh the the poacher and his wife. Because they they'll just they'll just find each other in the backyard and talk about <laughs> stuff that happened off camera. Yeah. Oh, I found a dead boy out. Yeah, yeah. For, oh, you do, dumb bitch! I don't know what you're talking about. What is happening? How can this matter? <laughs> it doesn't. That's the best part. That's th- those characters are the best part of every Robert Holmes story. They're just like this weird, like Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. Yeah, but, yeah. No, he he writes a Rosencrantz and Guildenstern in every story he does. That's yeah, amazing. it'd be great if it was it's just incredible. those same two actors. Yeah, it's not it's not that, but it, but it's it's you always know it's a Robert Holmes story, even if you don't know going in that it's a Robert Holmes story, because you'd be like, why are we following around these characters? And then you'll look it up and you'll be like, oh, Robert Holmes, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> every time and he gets so good at it to the point where there's a tom baker episode that spawns an entire like big finish spinoff series of these two minor characters yeah it's so good (laughs) so good um yeah anyway so there's some doll factory shenanigans um this guy's mind controlled but we don't know that yet but for the sake of whatever he's acting really fishy um (laughs) and then john the doll maker who was his partner yeah uh, he gets fired, um, and he's upset about it. There's some creepy stuff going on with his workshop, and he can't get in there. Um, and then he leaves. And then we cut back to, uh, Liz in the lab, and she doesn't take anyone's crap. Like, anyone. It's wonderful. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we cut back to the rabbit trapper guy, um, and there's this creepy, creepy plastic dude in the woods. So scary. It's like... The stuff of nightmares. I, there is, there is nothing I love more than a scarf ascot (laughs) auton. Like, it is fantastic. And I understand, I understand that the reason that they're all wearing scarf ascots is to hide the fact that it's just a mask. Right. But, oh my god, it's so good. I wish that detail had never gone away. (laughs) I wish they still all wore gigantic scarf ascots. <laughs> it, it literally, you know what it is? It just, it looks like, it looks, uh, the Autons in this story, uh, until part four, when they're all wearing different stuff, the Autons in the story are all wearing the same thing, and they all look like Michael Myers shaved his head and then put on an ascot. Yeah, no, I was gonna, it's almost scarier. That's what they... <laughs> they're like wearing like the the navy uh, uh what do you call that the jump jumpsuit like the jumpsuit yeah 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 that, like a navy color jumpsuit just like michael myers and they have like the blank white face just like michael myers yeah no they look like they're in like they're like a group in the purge that goes out like together and they have like a theme <laughs> like, <laughs> i mean that's kind of what happens in part four yeah no but like it, <laughs> It's almost scarier as them being just, like, these creepy people that wear these, like, weird, like, plastic masks. 
They're super creepy. And and the guy the the dude in the in the woods uh is like the the solo Auton that we keep coming back to throughout the story. Yeah. And he just keeps getting creepier and creepier. It's pretty Like every time like, they uh, show his face, it's like, oh, oh god. Yeah. Good old good old Sam Seely's keeping that uh that glowy plastic meteorite in a in a, in a trunk. Yeah. yeah. And uh and his wife is having none of that. None <laughs> of that. Oh, that? I called your name once. Why didn't you say anything? Um. What is rock? <laughs> well, you're not bringing that filthy thing into my house. I'll kill you. I'll kill your children. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um. I, my favorite part of that is that she goes in the house and then comes back out. <laughs> And he's like, no, I see yeah. you. And she's like, all right. What you're looking at, woman. <laughs> you guys ever watch South Park? Do you remember when you met Chef's parents? Oh, I never, I, I didn't watch. That that oh, yeah. era, I watched like the first like four or five seasons and then I stopped watching for like ten years. Gotcha. So. They go to Chef's parents live in Scotland. And they, they remind me a lot of these two characters. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Just two older people yelling incomprehensibly at each other. It's fantastic. Oh so man. Uh, um <laughs> So we come back to Pertwee. Yeah, sure. This is my favorite like regeneration. Oh. <laughs> this is my favorite scene aside from the shoes cuz I love the shoes so much. But he, he walks around and goes into a door called Doctor's yeah. Only and just looks at it and then is like, "Yeah, all right." And then goes. <laughs> it's such a good like gag. Um, and he takes, he takes the most frantic shower I have ever, <laughs> just like. He's, he sings <laughs> opera. Oh my god. And like the two men like uh, walk into the room and he's showering and they're like, okay. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> also, not for nothing, but the guy that wear that is wearing the magician's jacket that Pertwee steals sure. is like three or four times the size of John Pertwee. Yeah, oh, that thing that thing should swallow him whole. I legit <laughs> thought was that an opera singer? Who was that? I don't know. I, I don't. I he was some sort of guy that they were bringing in to show like the crazy dude with the two hearts. Yeah, he was, and then the doctor was like, "I'll wear your outfit forever for the rest of my life." I bet he's in like yeah. the House of Lords or something. Like he's a member of Parliament. It's like, hey, look at this creepy guy we have. Yeah, um, I imagine it's like I imagine it's like the uh, the not not exact equivalent because obviously this is like the respected equivalent of like you know like you're like oh I'm about to break a record Guinness send somebody down here like <laughs> it's <laughs> he pulls he's out like, like some a tape sort of like, pulls out like a tape yeah, measure he's, yeah he's some kind of he's some kind of guy to like, yeah. come and be like oh. Yeah. Oh really? You have a new kind of human. <laughs> I'll see about that. And then uh the doctor uh having been bathed uh for the first time in his life technically. Yeah, he just <laughs> he's, he's he steals that ridiculous man's clothes and he looks and like then, a like a yeah, like a soul train Dracula. Yeah. <laughs> and then he steals his car. He just straight up <laughs> steals this guy's car. And it's the most, like, outlandish, it's like a bright red, like, 1920s roadster, and he's just like, yeah, that one. That'll blend doctor, in. It's, well, to Mobile. be fair, he does try to get the other, the, the less, <laughs> the more conspicuous car, but it's locked. Yeah, he's uh, like, oh, well, okay, here we go. <laughs> I just like that there's this guy driving around dressed like a magician and <laughs> driving that roadster, going around and making sure that, that... Medical doctor's claims are accurate. Oh my Hello. god. My name is Dr. Morris. Like, he, he, <laughs> he looks like a villain in an opera. Yeah. No, he, he does. looks. He looks like Governor Radcliffe from Pocahontas. Yes. Like. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, England is a magic place. <laughs> he definitely comes home to like a white little pug. <laughs> For sure. Diggles, someone stole my and like a man everything. servant. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Um, oh. So after that, the Brig uh, tries to open the TARDIS because um, he gets the key from the doctor um, when he's unconscious. And the key doesn't work. 
Um, and then we cut away back to the creepy plastic man and his adventures. Um, and Unit finds one of the, uh, the missing, um, meteorite glowy things. Um, and he just, this plastic man just runs into the middle of the road and makes the unit car crash. And there's like blood and it's like kind of gross. It's like super visceral. Um, and not like what you would expect from Doctor Who. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's the most the blood that I think we see, we ever see on Classic Who until we get to the Colin Baker era. Yeah, right? until it's like the 80s. Everything's the 80s. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of, a, it kind of leans credence to why watching this really reminded me of like, like the Wicker Man or like Suspira or like, oh yeah, a Christopher Lee Dracula movie, but that's just because of yeah. Brady's outfit. <laughs> Because you can tell it's fake blood because it's, like, bright red. But you're just like, oh, yeah. oh, God, that guy went through the windshield. Like, he is dead. Yeah. Um, and, <laughs> and, then, and to avoid a plastic man. Yeah. Um, so Pertwee goes back. He, he finds his way to unit. Um, and he is also, just, like... Also, Pertwee has that stupid hat that he literally never wears again. Even yeah. he, he's like, I'm not going to... This is, He had a hat <laughs> and I have to steal everything, but I'm not, I'm not going to wear this. Yeah. I guess it looks continues. good in that hat, though. I mean, I, for a second, yeah. I'm glad yeah. that he doesn't keep wearing it, though, because yeah. it is a little much. There, there. You could easily make the meme where he tries on like the he tries on like the 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 newsboy hat, newsboy cap mm-hmm. first, and then he's like, ugh, no, and then it puts on the other one, and like you could totally like make like a some kind of like gross like yes, ma'am, like like oh wh- god, whatever that. Yeah, the lady. With the, yeah. yeah, the mala- yeah, <laughs> lady. Yeah, you could do like a total like milady uh, uh, meme or something out of that moment. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, do like, it instead of damn Daniel. It's like damn doctor. <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> man, um, and Pertwee's just like flirting with his eyebrows at Liz. There's this great line about like, oh yeah, he's looking at his face in the mirror and he's just like, oh yeah, it's good for this one planet where they talk with their eyebrows. And then he just like says hello with his eyebrows. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> they uh, they just like do some science. Um, and the, uh, the most British yeah, guy do. to ever British <laughs> is like breaks into the factory next to a gate that's clearly open that says goods in, but he decides to climb over the wall and through some barbed wire <laughs> to prove a point. Um, and he goes back and he breaks in to uh, check out his old workshop, and there's, like, machines and more creepy ascot mannequins. Um, one starts walking towards him with his hand all bent weird, and then there's the most spectacular cliffhanger face. Uh, there's going to be a it's, lot. It's- it's pretty good. It's a really, I, I think it's like, it's a, it's not a great cliffhanger because it felt like the, the cliffhanger was that, oh my God, the mannequin thing is alive. But it's like, but we've already seen them be alive. Right. So it wasn't super surprising, especially because like part three starts with his hand flipping open and you see the, the, the gun, the mm-hmm. handgun. Yeah. I feel like if you had ended up episode two on the the handgun reveal, that would have been a proper cliffhanger. I don't know. Mm-hmm. At, le- at least a little bit better than like, oh, it's alive. Yeah, no, we know. One of them ran a guy off the road. Now he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> this is no dream. This is really happening. Maybe they <clears> thought <throat> that they couldn't have like two like guns shooting cliffhangers back to back because then that – I mean, mm. I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> It's maybe. Sure. Yeah, that I could see that. One of the things I noticed in this episode was and, and this is a this is a a a uh a thing that I, I really love in Doctor Who regeneration stories. There's a lot of Troughton in Pertwee's performance in these first two episodes. Oh yeah. <clears throat> and I love that. I love that as a trope of Doctor Who regeneration stories that the incoming doctor tends to sort of act a little like the previous doctor for a little bit. Wow. There's only there's only two that I can think of that don't do that. Like Tom Baker doesn't really do that. Well, Tom Baker does whatever Tom Baker wants to do. Sure. <laughs> um, and what Tom language. Baker wants to do is drink. Uh, <laughs> Everybody, uh, don't stop. Don't, I, oh. <laughs> um, 
So Tom Baker <laughs> didn't really do that. And then like, obviously Colin Baker didn't do that at all. Um, yes. But, but everyone else tends to do that. And I really, I, I enjoy that trope. I don't, I, I think it's a really, it's like a respectful thing. I don't yeah, know. Even, you know, now that I think about it, 12 talking to the dinosaur is pretty 11-y in uh, Deep Breath. Oh yeah, Capaldi's like straight up like Matt Smith until probably when he steals that hobo's clothes <laughs> is when he starts, when he Wait. starts getting kind of. A, a little bit more Capaldi. He gets real Scottish with it at that point, right? Exactly. But before I love, that, he's very. I old. love that. Um, like the whole stealing somebody's clothes trope comes from this too. Like, because Eleventh sure. Hour, like they're in a hospital and he just steals somebody's clothes. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> he just goes. He just goes through the locker room. Yeah. He does the same thing. Yeah. Goes through the locker room at the hospital. Yeah. Who a lot knows of where nine got locker clothes. rooms at hospitals. <laughs> And who knows where nine? I bet nine got his clothes from from a, like a bar. Give me well, a nine coat. Was like nine was like wearing half of his clothes when he regenerated from the war doctor. So. <laughs> That's very true. Oh, <laughs> the only thing I mean, he, he kept the leather jacket and then just like put on jeans and a t shirt. Goodbye, yeah, clothes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, never mind. I'm gonna keep them. Why am I wearing all these layers? Don't like layers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, Nick, Nick, tell us about us part three. To, so part three ends with uh, the Auton showing off his weird little hand nozzle. Uh, he tries <laughs> yeah. to he tries to shoot ransom or ransom, ransom with uh, an energy bolt, <laughs> but he escapes. And then he's like, What's, "I want no part of this." Uh, outside of the, so the, the Dodon just chasing him, but then it's East Channing and then he re-enters the building and then we meet General Scooby and, uh, <laughs> says goodbye to Channing and, uh, Hibbert. <laughs> and then he's like, Hey, I can, uh, I can actually take a look at the models, you know, before you, before you ship them out. And, uh, meanwhile, Ransom climbs over the wall, runs into <laughs> the greatest man ever and he, uh, collapses. And uh, Channing sends uh, an Auton to finish the job because he's like, hey, that dude, <laughs> that dude saw the hand pop off. Like, he knows the whole deal. Like, we have to, <laughs> we have to kill him. And Hit to- total <laughs> destruction. Yeah, a total. Okay, okay. So we have <laughs> destruction, which is he dies. And total destruction is when another, they vanish in a puff of smoke. Yeah. That happens in this episode, right? Don't they kill Ransom? Yeah, yeah. They, yeah, they yeah. kill John, yeah. Um, then, uh, in the tent, uh, yeah, so, yeah, he, he, he dies. Uh, Hibbert, <laughs> Hibbert's starting to, oh, man, this is, I'm just really bad at this, because it just, the whole bleeds, I'm trying to remember, like, what specifically happened in three, uh, so Ransom says, like, hey, there are these, like, uh, <laughs> it doesn't say autumn, there are these plastic men, and they're coming to life, very similar to, uh, the, the guy in, uh, Power of the Daleks. Yeah. He's like, hey, there are these monsters being built behind the scenes. I need your help. And everyone's like, shut up. Yeah. Um, the doctor, <laughs> meanwhile, is trying to get a hold of that TARDIS key. Uh, mm-hmm. And he uh, takes it. He attempts to escape. But then the TARDIS, like, stalls out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's this great. <laughs> he, tries to, he tries to cut and run. Well, the, yeah, there's this great joke where he's like, he wouldn't do that. And then you hear, like, the 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 the, the, the TARDIS, like, make a horrible noise and smoke starts coming out and then Pertwee opens the door and he's like I wasn't I was just uh I was just uh, making sure that everything was running okay and it is not and this is out. like doctor I trusted you and he's like ah shut up <laughs> <laughs> and then he pouts the rest of the scene yeah he's just like super mad um meanwhile <laughs> um Mrs. Mrs. Seeley is in her cottage just living her life Oh, uh, she discovers the oh, meteor. God. She finds the meteor ride. She's like, "Go watch this!" Uh, and then she hears <laughs> one of the most unsettling things I've ever heard in a, <laughs> in, in a show. Where she hears she hears her dog barking from inside the house, and then the dog like you, I I think the Auton like slowly stepped on the dog's neck or something, but the dog is like. Oh, 
felt like it was it was it was it, was, it, it sounded human at the end and the best part human is or like a dog. it's you can tell it's totally a guy just barking in the background because they couldn't afford like an actual dog <laughs> so yeah. it's just some That's guys like <laughs> 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 and then uh she sees the auton <laughs> And uh, pulls the shotgun out, and it's like, you better, I'll, I'll blow you up. And then it's, okay, I, I was kind of left fuzzy. The the, the missus didn't, Danta didn't kill her, right? No. Okay. She was just like, yeah, I think it missed or something. I don't know. Yeah. She didn't die. So Unit arrives at the cottage, and uh, they find the Auton, and uh, they shoot it, it's- but it, it escapes. It's um, a real, uh, it's a real Michael Myers moment. Like when you shoot him and he just keeps coming, flocking forward toward you. You know, no, totally, totally. It's it's definitely that. But yeah, the Auton jogging away is it's just the greatest. <laughs> just running away. Hey, uh, I love w- when things in ridiculous costumes run away. That's it's the greatest. Uh, hey, have the Autons ever spoken? Um, I mean, later in the story, but otherwise, not really, I don't think. Okay, I mean, you know, they don't really have, like, an iconic voice the way that, like, the Daleks and the Cybermen do. No. No. They're usually silent. Can we talk about Liz's plastic bubble coat? Oh, then she just, like, drapes it over the, like, this will make her feel better. (laughs) Just a plastic bubble coat. I don't know what kind of style that is, but. 70s. Oh, man. And then sixties uh, actually. This was still the sixties. Is it? I thought it was nineteen seventy. When, when when it was when it was when it came out. It came oh, out in January yeah. of nineteen seventy, but they shot it in sixty nine. Man. That's why I mean that's why that's why John Perwe looks like Austin Powers. <laughs> that's true. They have like the puffy <laughs> sleeves and Yeah, puff, puffy puffy sleeves and, and a velvet jacket. Like And a cape. In a cape. Yeah, he's Austin Powers. So uh, the doctor, Brigadier, and Liz uh, meet Hibbert, and they're like, hey, WTF, man. Hibbert's like, I don't know what you guys are talking about. You're being stupid. Uh, I think Auto Classics <laughs> is a great company. I think they do good work. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Brigadier calls General Scooby, and he's like, hey, I need you to, I need you to raid the shit out of this factory. Because there's like plastic people everywhere, and Scooby's like, Briggs, Briggy, dude. I got you. As long as as long as I'm living, as long as I stand before you, before God, Queen, and country, I will I will order I trust you. I trust you so hard. And I'm not going anywhere. And then um he hangs up and uh there's uh, an Auton version of himself and uh we get another uh cliffhanger face. Yeah. Our third cliffhanger face in a row. Some good cliffhanger face. Yeah, uh, this character God, that we story's... don't that we don't care about. Oh, story's so good, <laughs> it's so good. I love it so much. I love everything about it. Um, so uh, so part part four is just Doctor and Liz hanging out in a wax museum. Um, sure, and they're literally in Madame Trousseau's. Like that's where they shot it. They, they they even name check Madame Trousseau throughout throughout the episode. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's and they're just hanging out Madame Trousseau. And I, every time I watch this, I'm just like, I want all these wax figures to come to life because okay. that's what this story is promising me. I have a question. <laughs> this story is promising me that all of these wax figures are going to come to life. And then there's that amazing scene where they do accept all of the good ones. Like <laughs> all the good ones are just wax figures. And I'm like, Gandhi? No, just a wax figure. Oh, well, President Kennedy? No, just a wax figure. <laughs> so I have a question. So they're 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 at the warehouse, right? Shaw and the doctor. And right. the doctor notices that a lot of the wax figures are from <clears throat> local government <laughs> authority figures. Right. And right. and everyone's like, yeah, they just were told that they were gonna make wax figures of everyone. That didn't raise any major flags that someone wanted to yeah. make wax sculptures of all of these like minor bureaucrats in the area. <laughs> I mean, ego is a powerful thing. <laughs> like, that just screams trap to me. So he notices that General Scooby's uh Auton or you know, Manigan has a watch. And he's like, What kind of what kind of man would have a watch on us? And what kind of man would make a watch? Why is it why is it stuck? Why? 
<laughs> so specifically, he doesn't mumble, and he says, he says that the watch that the wax figure is wearing is set on, on General Scooby. It's, yeah, the time is set, and he's like, "Why would they bother to put a watch on a wax figure and set the time?" And Liz is like, "I don't know," and he's like, "Yeah, right." Um, <laughs> you get it. You get me. <laughs> and then, and then they're hanging out until after close. And then they hide by pretending to be wax figures. So again, just shenanigans. <laughs> it's so great. With a capital S. Uh, and then my favorite thing is, okay, so the so the Autons plan is that they're going to replace all of the world leaders with with wax highly fig- detailed Autons. Sure. Uh, Auton replacements that they control. And so then the nesting consciousness who uh, you know, control all the Auton like plastic zombies. Yeah. Um, can 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 take over, can invade Earth, and you're like, oh, that's all right, cool. That's a really smart plan. And they're like, and also all of the mannequins. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, oh, but but what wh- 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 why? Because it's cool. Power. <laughs> Power. I just love that they're like, and we we will replace all of the world leaders and the mannequins <laughs> and take over the world. Mm. Oh, I love that. And I love that. I love that Brigadier calls them window dummies. Yeah. It's a great, it's a good, it's a good, it's a good phrase. I like that. Window, window dummies. dummies. Um, I'm about to introduce you to queen and country. <laughs> Oh man! Shake the, him and him. bake. So 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 as they're figuring out what the Autons plan is, Hibbert uh, Hibbert's mind control starts to wear off, sure. and he goes crazy and grabs a lead pipe and starts tearing up this machine uh, that's been in the room with the Autons this whole time. It's like this this big machine thing, and he breaks off like a piece of it, and it just starts like bleeding green and brown, like alternating green and brown liquid. Something's yeah. in there. Something, yeah, something, something yeah, something that's it's super weird. Um, and uh, uh, so then, so then, unit comes to the factory and they 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 start a shootout. It's the first shootout of the Pertwee era, not, a lot. Um, not even our first, not even our first unit shootout, by the way. It's just our first shootout of the Pertwee era. Um, last time unit were around, they they did a shootout also. Uh, and uh, and then and then Pertwee and the doctor and Liz go up to the room with the with the machine uh, because because uh, Channing kill, kills Hibbert again. Total total destruction. total destruction. He is total gone. destruction of Hib- of, of Hibbert. Um, and so he 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 gets shot and then poofs off off in a in, in smoke. And then uh, uh, Pertwee is literally just like, oh hey, here's this machine, and then the machine <laughs> busts open and. The Audrey his 2 just comes mo- out. His tentacle monster attacks Pertwee. <laughs> and Pertwee makes the most amazing faces for, like, it's just glorious Pertwee face. For, like, for, two minutes. Like, <laughs> oh, like, two straight It kind of, it kind of, it kind of turns into, minutes. like, some weird, like, tentacle hentai stuff. For a little bit. <laughs> it like, does. It, like, it's trying to get into his mouth. Yeah. No, it's spectacular. <laughs> and and what, what the tentacle monster is is basically – the nesting consciousness has taken physical form and, as a vine and, and, monster, and, and, right? And so Pertwee is just fighting the nesting consciousness, taking physical form, uh, because Pertwee only only fights physically. That's yeah, pretty much. So he solves all of his problems. He's the bruiser. Yeah, he is. I was going to say the idea of Matt Smith being presented with this physical of a threat, like. Like all I want from the the Matt Smith era is like four different felt tentacles attacking him at once, <laughs> and just Matt Smith doing his weird like like inflatable man dance. <laughs> and Liz and so, Shaw Shaw does a jack crap. She's like, no, what, she do saves I, what do she I? What do I do? Pearly. She she saves the doctor. She's the one that that comes in and and. Breaks up the tentacles and saves the day. I, I feel like there um, was. I feel like there was a lot of her staring at the. I feel like seeing the nest teen attack the doctor kind of like froze her for a little bit. 
Well, yeah, I mean, she was making fun of little blue men. She didn't even get that right. She's so <laughs> so good. far removed from the idea of alien things good that she one, doesn't doctor. even know how to make fun of them right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like choking him, and he's like, she's like, I don't believe in gobbledygook. Yeah, no, it's a real scully of a situation. Is what's yeah, but if, if there was an X-Files episode where, like, an HR puffin stuff tentacle came out of a closet <laughs> and started attacking Mulder. I, I know, I just want to take the HR puffin stuff theme song and put it over that scene. <laughs> what is, it, it, HR yeah, it, puffin stuff. No, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you feel like underneath it, it's just like Sigmund and the sea monsters are just in that box. <laughs> probably are they were hot boxing in there oh yeah. my no, god yeah, there's also a lot of there's a lot of dry ice in the box yeah oh yeah for sure um so, no so one anyway can destroy so, the nestings so they defeat the autons oh yeah and they they per we invented a machine that uh separates uh because because the nesting consciousness is controlling them through like like psychic connections or whatever he invents a machine that breaks the connection so then the autons all just like drop um <laughs> sure and the, and so he uses that on the machine, and then or or I guess Liz uses that on the machine, and then yeah. um, defeats the nesting consciousness, and everything's fine. And then Pertwee, uh, the doctor, he goes and he talks to. It's very hard to call <laughs> call the third doctor the doctor because I just want to call him Pertwee because um, <laughs> he's so much just Pertwee. Uh, so so the doctor um, is back in the lab with Brigadier and and Liz Shaw. And Brigadier's like, okay, listen, Doctor, what do I got to do to make you stay? And, and meanwhile, the Doctor can't go anywhere because yeah. the, the Time Lords uh, changed the dematerialization codes in the TARDIS, so he can't go anywhere. But he's, like, making a show, but he's just like, well, I don't know. You think I, I can have some stuff. money? No. There, there's some things <laughs> that you could give me. And he's like, oh, what, like money? Um, and he's like, no, what, what am I going to do with money? I can't do anything with money. Stupid. Uh, you know, but he, he's like, I just want a nicer lab. Give me a, give me a good facility to, to work on the TARDIS and help you guys and, and whatever. And then he's like, he's like, oh yeah, I could probably do that. He's like, oh, also, uh, some more fancy clothes. That would be, <laughs> that would be good. Like a whole wardrobe of fancy clothes like these and various, like, and a variety right. of colors. I mean, sure. I guess. Yeah, and he's just like, oh, and I really like that car. Can I have that car? And he's like, that car no. didn't belong to you. Can I have a car exactly like that car? Like, and Brigadier's yeah, like, so. this is going to be a whole thing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and he was right. It was. And then, and then, we, then... And then we end on a close-up of of the doctor just, like, smiling away, just cheesing away. Smith. The camera. Ba-da, 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 Smith. Ba-da, ba-da. Like... Oh, I never, got, I never got your name. And he goes, oh, my name is Smith. Dr. John Smith. <laughs> Just. Yeah. It's That's the Pertwee all, Show with me, John Pertwee. I got a lot of adventures to do. I'm going to run this ship for five years and then I'm going to do. <laughs> oh, man. So good. Spearhead and space. Things, things are about to get space, real guys. weird, guys. <laughs> Spearhead from space. I love that. I love that Nick is going to get is getting the first story of the of the unit era followed immediately by the final story of the unit era. I'm excited. Well, I mean, not re. No, well, because like they he hangs around for a little bit because there's like Zygons. Oh great, um, Zygons! Well, well, he comes. He comes back, but he le- he does leave after the first story. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, like, like it really feels like a punctuation to the unit era. Yeah, that's you know? fair. Like, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So, so, so uh, next week we're talking about uh, the first Tom Baker story, Robot or Robot. <laughs> Robot. I uh, I really wanted this to end with uh, like an Austin Powers type like dance sequence where he just dances to Bossa Nova. I, I, I honestly I want that too. I think we need to figure out a way to make that happen. We need to dress uh, Sean Pertwee up like his father. <laughs> yeah, he, I'm, sure he, I'm sure he wouldn't find that. Sure, he wouldn't find that upsetting at all. <laughs> Just do a full on opening credit sequence like dance number, like Sean, like Austin Powers dance number. Or he's like oh pretending to read a newspaper. Yeah, <laughs> covering his nethers. <laughs> <laughs> 
I know. I mean, that did happen in this. I'm John Pertwee. John Pertwee covering up his nethers. Welcome to the 70s. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so good. I know. Strap in, Britain. Uh, so so we're now uh we're now three stories in how you feeling about classic who nick you know better and better um yeah i feel like i'm kind of going through uk like pop culture like decade by decade yeah well, not decade by decade but <laughs> this has been 30 years since but like you know if you look at like the Troughton, um the yeah Power, power of the dogs. It's very sixties. No, no, no. What was the first? What was the first act? Hartnell. 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 Uh, yeah, like it. It kind of has this kind of drab sixties kind of like black and white early BBC. But then seventies, the it's you know this is the world where you could see like Monty Python and like Benny Hill and like it's mm-hmm. Faulty Tower and it's just like oh okay cool and you know this this is a very beautiful like episode like it does have a really cool you know charm to it and yeah like there are parts that are definitely campy and are and are fun but you know then like the autons are genuinely kind of unsettling and creepy and like you know the 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 splashes of blood that we see or violence you know the fact that we have guns and shooting in this it, it is kind of showing the show sort of attempting to change with the times and you know managing to do it elegantly more so than awkwardly i think yeah and this episode, for sure. I can only speak for. And the and the whole the whole idea of the Pertwee era was that um, the show was losing viewers, and the BBC wanted to keep the show on and make it cheaper. So they made it Earthbound and shot more location stuff than set stuff, mm-hmm. and uh, and then we get we get the Pertwee era of yeah. uh, of, of uh, exiled on earth yeah, and brigadier and brigadier ups the uh the the sex factor that you got <laughs> i mean so does so does pertwee let's be honest sure it's, it's a comedy i mean really if i'm shipping anybody it's it's oh god yeah me. definitely yeah 100 oh, percent. <laughs> all right go to him before you go just, shall we have just a... wait we're just wait until you get the most like amazing love triangle that is the doctor the brigadier and the master Oh, oh my man. god! I can't wait. <laughs> oh. I like you that. Get uh, through, you got to get through all of season seven, but then season eight, all master, all the time. <laughs> Go ahead, Cassandra. Sorry. <laughs> uh, no, I'm just. I like that. Um, like this. This feels more modern too. Like the pacing of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's probably because it's just like it's four episodes instead of yeah. six. But like, even from an earthly child, like an earthly child is very slow kind of to start it's sort of it, it it's it's sort of uh, <clears throat> getting out of like the chamber room drama of doctor who yeah it's more it's much more actiony like pertwee is like the most james bond of the doctors um yeah and i like that this this episode is like a really good starter classic who episode for people who are interested i think because it is only four parts there's yeah. Autons. We've seen Autons before. There's like um, zero Time Lord mythology. Or yeah, like, it's just know. straight shenanigans. Well, very, very little. They mention they mention the he mentions the Time Lords a couple of times, sure. but because the story just before this actually introduced the Time Lords. Yeah. Um, oh man, so good. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we got a long time before I we know. get to that. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it's it's really. Oh God, it's excellent. It's it's just Spearhead from Space is just one of the best stories. Um, it's I, I love it so much. And really, this whole season of John Pertwee, like these first like what is it five stories? I think that make up season seven, mm, five, five, four, F- four. Is it just four? Uh, Ambassadors of Death, Salarians, and then Inferno. Right. That's it, huh? Yeah, because they, wow. like they're all like six, seven parts after this one right right um yeah and they're all just so good like so good um so i'm i'm really uh god i love this season it's really good it's really good and then i'm i'm just so excited to start getting into the tom baker of it all because like you're coming into like prime tom baker now a couple years from now a couple years from now when we're like we're like 
deep into like season like four and five of Tom Baker, you're just going to be like, why can't this guy die? Can he just die? <laughs> Is that, can we be done with him? But like those first like three seasons, like two and a half, three seasons, it's just, oh, nonstop goodness. It's mm-hmm. awesome. It's, it's just, it's like the most Doctor Who the show has ever been until like recently, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. So good. I'm excited for you, Nick. I'm excited for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Oh, we didn't even mention the the uh, Auton massacre uh, when. The, oh my when god! The, <laughs> when when all the when all the uh, <laughs> all the mannequins come to life and just start just start murdering people. Oh yeah, when just like dozens of innocent people are like shot and down in cold blood, just like trying to get to work, and the autons are like, "No, you're gonna die today." (laughs) Yeah, we don't even know where this is happening either. That's my favorite part of it, because we don't really get a sense of there being a town at Unit because Unit is just a military base, and we're just kind of we kind of just tend to hang out on the military base most of the time. So there's just it's it really just feels like we're cutting to some random city. Like, well, Where? Cardiff is screwed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, man. They're just, and they're just like close ups of people just running away in terror. And then dying. And then dying. And then getting stepped on as, like, as they fall to the ground. <laughs> it's really messed up, you guys. Everybody lives just this <laughs> once, Rose. Everyone lives. <laughs> If you want to visit us online, you can go to the doctorscompanion.us. We have a donation button. You could uh, click on if you would like to help us out financially. Uh, contact at the doctorscompanion.us if you want to email us any of your thoughts about any of the stuff that we talked about. Uh, you know, who do you we'll think? Do bring- a, we'll do a regular uh, mailbag uh, <laughs> segment if uh, if we get emails. totally. Yeah, like who do you you know who do you think the who do you think the brigadier belongs with Shaw or, or Pertwee? Uh, tweet, <laughs> tweet. Are you Team Pertwee or Team Shaw? Um, tweet us at TDC Pod. Follow us on Tumblr at the Doctor's Companion Podcast dot Tumblr dot com. Uh, you can check out our new cover art by Kevin Ziegler. We love it. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, Facebook. Like us on the Facebook. Leave us a five star iTunes review. It really helps us out. And speaking of iTunes, while you're there, oh, subs- oh yeah, keep going. Spe- speaking of iTunes, you know why we need reviews? Because some other podcast is called The Doctor's Companions. What's it about? What? It's another Doctor Who podcast. How long has they this been a thing? Like, just recently. They only have 26 episodes. Well, tell them to shove off. We've been here since 2009. I know. Let's get some reviews going on The Doctor's yeah, don't, Companions. Don't, don't, yeah, so don't let these Yahoo's... Them. If those Yahoo's yeah. get more reviews than us, anyway, that's not cool. Ripping yeah. off our we like you like. I'm sorry, but you start a podcast, you're gonna go look up if anyone else has that name. What are you gonna do? You, so you just pluralize it? Really? Come on. Also, what are you just talking oh, about? Their man. companions. Anyway, <sighs> anyway, screw them. Screw their families. <laughs> uh, back to the future minute. <laughs> screw their family. <laughs> screw their dogs. Screw their, their dogs. Cats. Their kin. <laughs> uh, their village. Back to the Future Minute. Uh, we're very proud of that. We're wrapping up the first Back to the Future. So uh, we're getting ready to take a break. So be sure to catch up on that. We're very happy with our guest hosts and just that podcast in general. It's a big source of love and positivity in our lives. Yeah. Speaking of love and positivity, uh, Geek by Night, continuing full steam ahead. Uh, by the time you listen to this, uh, Cassandra's directed and co-written episode, The Fandom Menace Part 1. Should be dropping in the feed, so get ready for that. And you can help us sub- uh, keep yeah. Gate by Night alive. I think, I think at this point, I, I I think at this point one and two both are out. Oh, uh, right. I forgot we already have like a couple in the can. Uh, so yeah, yeah. So, so there's a good chunk of Geek by Night for you guys to listen to, and uh, you can help us out by subscribing to our Patreon, becoming a patron, and getting all kinds of things: a like commercial edition, commercial free omnibus editions of the show, music, commentary, podcast. We hook you up. Because if you're a, if you're a subscriber to Geek by Night or a patron of Geek by Night, you're part of the you're part of you're 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 in the family. You're in the right. You're you're our new ride or die, and uh, we take care of you. And next time <laughs> we'll be uh, introducing us to uh, everyone's favorite uh, 
heavy drinking, scarf wearing, uh, <laughs> doctor, Tom Baker, and Robot. 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 And, uh, Robot. Yeah. Long live the Queen. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs>